Here. De Palma? Here. Marshall? Here. Thurman? Here. Unruh? Here. Rumble? Here. All right, that brings us to the agenda. Um, there are two items that are being added under new business. They are in front of you there. They will be item A and item B. Item A is trustee meeting appointments and item B is township attorney opinions. And then all the other ones will move down a spot. I'll make a motion. I will. So, 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 I'll second the motion. Uh, to approve as amended? Yes. I didn't bring a pen. There's one up here. Steve's got you covered. Any discussion? This is what item? Mm -hmm. What item A? Yep. They're all labeled. Okay. All right, I'm not hearing any discussion, so uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, that brings us right into the public hearings. And the first one is the Zarita Special Assessment, SAD number two, amendment to the cost. Uh, is anybody here to speak about Zarita? Ken, did you have any? You're, you're good? Okay. Thank you. we're good. Yeah, you know what? I, I would just like to clarify the the reason for the that amendment that showed we, up in the paper. The oh, yeah, don't I'm have, sorry. Yeah, that's right. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. I'll support. Uh, thank you, Dana. Special Assessment I'm District SAD number two. Yep. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, go ahead, Scott. Sorry. Um, in the paper, it made it look like uh, I'll speak directly to you. Yeah, it, it, it made it look like it was a, a huge jump, but it was because we increased it from two to five years. I had a neighbors, that been yeah, and that yeah. I, I just want to make sure that was clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the way I explained it. It was it went for five years. It's still yeah. thousand dollars a year. We're all good. Yeah. It, okay. It found mm -hmm. in the paper. Yeah. And that was per how our attorney wanted it done. Right. So. A couple of them questioned it, but we're all good. Sure. Good. Okay. Anybody else here for the first public hearing? All right. Can we get a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make the motion to support. Okay. Roz and Bob, thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. That brings us to the next one, which is the Zarita Special Assessment, SAD number two, approval of special assessment role for Zarita. Uh, we need a motion to open the hearing. I'll make a motion to open the hearing. <coughs> thank you. Second. <coughs> thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Is anybody here for that portion of Zarita? Uh, we're good. Okay. <laughs> Still good. <laughs> all right. We need a motion to close I'll the public hearing. I'll make a motion hearing. to close. Thank you, Ross. Support. Thank you, Bob. Everybody's quick tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. be a long all right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. All right, that brings us to the Legault Assessment District, uh, SAD Private Road Maintenance, SAD number two, approval of special assessment role for Legault Private Road Maintenance. I'll make a motion to open the hearing. Thank you, Kathy. Second. Thank you, Steve. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Anybody here to speak about Legault? And you have three minutes, and we ask that you come up to the counter, or to the counter, to the podium, sorry. Hello, my name is Ed Derbyshire, and uh, I own the 20 acres at the end of Legault Road, and I made a Freedom of Information request for all the um, road maintenance agreement that have happened on Legault Road, and I only received the one that was provided when I purchased the land that I signed, along with the other seven owners um, of the property. This is the split of the 70 acres that was um, initially put out. I did put a letter out. I hope the... Uh, it was passed on to each of you and you had a chance to read it is how I felt um, the problem that I have with it is the wording of the of the sad I don't have a problem with everybody on the road paying for it the problem is is if you have multiple lots or you have a vacant lot it's not clear as to what happens uh, my neighbor that owns a 10 acres next to me wants to sell it because he's he wants out he's, he's done he can't afford it and um, I want to know if I buy that 10 acres next to my 20 if um, if I'll have to pay twice the sad for it. And uh, I want to know if I split my 20 into two tens, do I have to pay another assessment on it? If I split my 20 into seven two and a half acre parcels, do I have to pay seven times? It comes up to about $3,000, a significant amount of money compared to me just paying 
for one lot. So it's not clear in the wording. I hope you guys would uh, look through my letter. I don't want to read it since I only have three minutes, but if uh, you can provide it to everybody, I'd, I really would appreciate it. I think it's pretty clear. Um, there's a lot of garbage that happened on Legault Road when it was put in. I believe it was the township's fault. They didn't make it a public road, and they didn't uh, have anybody sign a road maintenance agreement other than uh, the original owners, from what I've been able to find. Um, okay, and that's all I have. Thank you. Is there anybody else here to speak on the Legault public hearing? All right, I'm looking for a motion to close the public I'll hearing. I'll make the motion to close. Thank so you, Ross. Right. Thank you, Bob. All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, that brings us to the last public hearing, uh, CDBG program year 2022. And I uh, need a motion to open that hearing, please. I'll motion. make the motion to open. I'll okay. support her. Thank you, Dana. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Anybody here to speak about the CDBG funds program year 2022? I assume you are, Bob. Since <laughs> 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 Uh, Bob MacArthur, I'm chairman of Brandon Grove and Youth Assistance. Uh, we've been fortunate every year to get that CDBG money uh, for different programs. Uh, currently, the, the programs that the township contract indicates is the youth over 13 years and older. So it pretty much sticks us to the high school. We occasionally catch a student at the middle school in order to use the funds for those students. We currently have close to $3,000 setting in CDBG money to be used currently. And that is planned to, to be used in the, hopefully in the next two months on a challenge day at the high school, which will take just about that entire fund to put that program on. We, it does a thousand, uh, or thousand does a hundred students at a time uh, put through that program and then we uh, the ones that qualify financially for CDBG then we we pay that per student to the high school and like I say it ends up covering up pretty much the entire fund we're hoping would love to see two sessions where it gets 200 kids instead of just a hundred uh, CDBG won't cover all of that but our funds will, uh, as long as it's assisted with that CDBG money, we'll still be able to uh, afford to do two of them if that actually occurs. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Anybody else here to discuss CDBG program year 2022? Greg? Um, I'm, a, I'm a big supporter of, of that program. Um, for that, that money that goes towards that. Uh, we have had a huge influx in uh, issues involving students, uh, especially at the middle school this year and in the high school, of course, but it seems to be trickling down and uh, anybody that we can push that direction to keep out of the legal system is huge. So anything for that, for that, uh, for that program, we, we strongly support. <coughs> yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, can you have a motion to close I'll the public I'll make the hearing? motion to close. Thank you, Ross. I'll support. Thank you, Dana. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, that brings us into our reports. And in our reports, we have the Treasury report. We have the General Ledger report, the Designated report, our Reconciliation report, our Building Department report, and then that brings us to Parks and Rec. Fred, do you have anything you want to say since you're here? Well, fall is among us, and uh, we managed to finish our outdoor season, spring, summer, and fall, on a good note. Uh, we had every team had a sponsor. We uh, generated a lot of fun in the township park and also the Billy Sherman Park. All things went well. And then, then we opened the doors for indoor programs and we have a full house. The numbers are pretty good considered. We still have issues with COVID. And uh, unfortunately, the kids have a mask mandate when they play the sports indoors. Uh, 
hopefully that uh, is, uh, be gone soon, maybe by next year. Uh, we have had uh, Lady Mustangs back for, I think Lady Mustangs has been around Parks and Rec for 30 some years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had some parent volunteers that keep it going for us. And we appreciate that. It keeps uh, an age group of seven, eighth grade girls busy playing basketball. The only other thing really is uh, tomorrow morning I have a conference call with the HRC uh, on the grants. <coughs> basically going to talk about all three of them. Currently the, the first grant that did the baseball fields and parking and some uh, whatnot is uh, finished. They had one issue with one of the PSBs we're going to, that's been uh, resolved. And from what I understand, they're going to pay one lump sum on the grant one. So it'd be $150,000 less 10%. When is that going to happen? The, huh? When is that going to happen? I, I don't know when the check's going to be written, but that's what they decided to do was to write one lump sum less 10%. <coughs> we'll get the other 10% when HRC signs off on it. Basically, hopefully next year we'll have a grand opening. That's when you got the DNR there and you got your senators and all that Congress people uh, under one big tent. The grant two, we uh, have two more PSBs that we got to wrap up. One of them's the basketball court that's not poured yet. And they gave us an extended deadline on that as well. And I think that's what most of the conference calls about, is about tomorrow is the grant two, to so get that wrapped up. And then uh, the concession stand grant, we got the approval from the federal government. They uh, are going to release the funds. And the next step is getting a drawing from what HRC is going to do, uh, Jason, they're going to get a hold of you, but they're going to put up, give you a cost <coughs> estimate so we don't run into, as Kathy Wells knows, that we ran into an over engineering cost on the last two projects. And basically, they stopped charging us, and they'd have been donating the rest of the, the funds, which added up to quite a bit. So um, my discussion with them was, well, you know what the budget is. We have something like $38,000 for the concession for engineering. Don't go over it, basically. And uh, they said they're going to work with that cost. It, what we have to do is make sure we get a general contractor, because that's where the the extra costs come in because right. you use them mo much more often. So other than that, I'll take questions if there's any. Has there, without diving in deep like, like you did last time, has there been discussion within the Parks and Rec subcommittee about what we discussed on the bathroom situation for the concession stand? No, because we haven't even had any engineering discussions yet on it as well. Okay. Um, but I did look, you know, I did keep that in mind and when I visit, I visit parks all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, they're just an open door, you yeah. know, and you can lock them at night when the park's mm -hmm. close. And one thing we did up since talking about parks, we did update the gates. Oh, they, they weren't locking and closing according to uh, the time they were set. And come to find out, some of the timers went bad. So what the parts? What how many years old now? <laughs> Those original, original timers. Was it so we got that fixed. Okay. You said about 2008, wasn't it? Grand opening was 2008. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Oh, thank okay. you, Fred. Thank you. <coughs> uh, then we have the Edna Burton Senior Center report and the CDBG report. Rosalind, do you have anything on that? Mm. No. Okay. We're just finishing up. Okay. Um, the door project at the senior center uh, most of it's been completed there was a punch list with some items that had to be finished the contractor came out finished the items on the punch list um, there's been two different punch lists so there's just one we're waiting on one item before we're done with the project okay trustee reports uh, Dana do you have anything sure um Neither of my committees met, so I don't have that, but just wanted to um, thank everybody who put together stuff for Halloween. It was a great turnout town, and it looked like all the kids were having a great time. And then, um, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It's coming quick. <laughs> thank you. Bob? 
Uh, I was on two committees. You were on both. I'll let you take the funder. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reports are already in here, so. <laughs> uh, Steve, um, I was on one committee, and again, you can take that. And <laughs> well, it's uh, it's already in here, so it's under new business. Can you have my? Can I have my moment without you? Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, just, uh, and then planning commission tomorrow, and I went to the MTA like uh, local networking chapter. They had a. Uh, they passed the law where I believe no, it's going to the Senate where they're going to take away local control if people want to put an Airbnb or vacation. And there's also another one that with our issue with marijuana being grown, there is a bill being pushed up to take that out. Even this is a bipartisan bill. So many people are on both sides of are having problems in their township, just like ours with the marijuana and the growing on residential area. There's going to be a bill that's being pushed through. It appears to be very positive to take care of that. So that was a couple good things. Other than that, nothing to report. Kathy? Okay, I had uh, two subcommittee meeting me meetings <clears throat> this past month. On um, October <clears throat> 26th, uh, we did the election accuracy test meeting. And um, from what I can tell, the voting tab tabulators are working correctly, and it was very interesting to watch how they worked. Um, and then I also attended the same meeting uh, that Steve did, the MTA quarterly meeting, and that was held at Bowers Educational uh, Farm. And uh, they want to uh, invite everyone to come out to their farm on a Saturday or Sunday. And uh, they do a lot of educational things for the kids and also um, they have guard they offer gardening and animal husbandry types of th uh, educational programs and and also at the meeting uh, SEMCOG was there and sub SEMCOG um, offers transportation statistics that even non-members um, can use and also uh, they're very good at helping to get pathway grant money, but that's not something our township is interested in, so we probably should continue to be uh, non-members at this point uh, with SEMCOG. And then I also wanted to wish everyone a uh, happy Thanksgiving. All right, thank you. Uh, Treasurer, Scott? Yeah, uh, long agenda, I'll be real quick. Uh, dog tags go on sale the 1st of December. Uh, as well as you start <coughs> seeing property tax bills showing up in the mailbox 1st of December. Uh, driving in tonight, I, I w didn't nearly hit some deer, but they ran across maybe uh, 50 yards in front of me. And then I started looking around the rest of my way in, and they're out there, and they're not thinking clearly right now. So drive slow, drive carefully, especially after dusk. That's it. Thank you. Rosalind. Good evening. Uh, thank you all for attending tonight's board meeting for Brandon Township. Uh, I just want to say a big thank you um, the, to everyone who worked the, on the election for, oh goodness. Okay. I just want to thank everyone for this, um, who worked on the election, um, for the clerk staff, um, everyone who, they, their hard work and dedication that went into it, um, it wouldn't have been a success without them. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who worked hard on that. Also, I just want to mention that the clerk's office mailed out, or the total absentee ballots that left our clerk's office was 1,577 ballots, of which 1,279 of those were returned, leaving the turn rate a 91%. All right. Thank you, Rosalind. <clears throat> Uh, I just have two quick things. Just wanted to say uh, we did receive another one of our statutory revenue checks in the amount of $259,805. <coughs> and I was just wanted to also wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. So that was it. All right. That brings us to correspondence. And there you'll find the sewer subcommittee meeting minutes. So those are there. Uh, citizens' comments on any agenda item. We will move on. Nothing under discussion. That brings us to our consent agenda. 
Uh, we have the regular meeting minutes of 10-4-2021, the special meeting minutes of 10-11-21, uh, regular bills in the amount of $11,136.80, prepays in the amount of $334,513.83, township benefits from payroll account in the amount of $32,312.32, and trustee timesheets in the amount of $1,378. Uh, can you get a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Thank you. <clears throat> because we're spending money, I'll get a roll call, please. Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Rumbo? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, that brings us to our unfinished business, which we have the trustee timesheet issue from last month. Um, that you will see here, we did have a discussion at the last meeting over an uh, item that was on a trustee's timesheet. It was recommended that we I speak to MTA, which I did, and the board did not want to spend any money on the township attorney on that. So I spoke with MTA. They did not give me an exact answer, but stated the board could approve certain types of meetings for approval to be paid. So you will see the two motions there, and I will make motion one to pay the township trustees their regularly scheduled per meeting wage, currently $106 for individual meetings with the supervisor, scheduled by the supervisor or any other meeting pre-approved by the supervisor where the township where township work is being done, not for networking and marketing events. Second. And I will also make motion two to pay the trustee timesheets from September from the October board meeting as they were presented in October. Second. Thank you. All right. So now that we have both those, yep, no problem. Hold on one second. We have both those motions. I will open up the floor for discussion. Go ahead. Um, so this, um, not for marketing or networking events correct I know every MTA event that they have they have networking so does that mean solely networking marketing events or any event where marketing or networking occurs it means what we voted on at the last meeting that when you brought it to the board and the board did not approve it it means no networking events so could you define that for me, please? I just did. No network. You know what networking is. So any event that has networking is not going to get paid for. In my discretion, I can approve it. In your discussion, you can approve discretion. it. Oh, discretion. Oh, discretion. Okay. Pre it has to be pre-approved, though. Okay, because, I mean, the MTA conference has a lot of networking. Yeah, we talked about the MTA stuff last time, and we said that it's not even actually officially MTA. They just call it that. The MTA does not do that, does not have quarterly meetings. No, I think Kathy meant. The MTA the conference is what I said. Oh, the conference? Yeah. yeah. Then, I mean, if you wanted to go to that and you bring it to me and then we can do it, then we would do it. Mr. Supervisor. And MTA does have yes, quarterly well. meetings. Uh, I have a question to, to this very point about the MTA. Uh, Trustee Unro went to that meeting. He did not put it on his on his timesheet. Trustee Thurman went to that meeting and put it on her timesheet. We have an inconsistency there, which is. I mean, Steve doesn't put them on there. Kathy does, and we've already approved those under the consent okay. agenda. And, I, and I'm fine with doing it, but going forward. I mean, I mean it's, it's 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 only it would be fair to uh, Trustee Unrau that to allow him to do that. Yep, it's his choice, and if he doesn't submit it, I mean, we can't force him to put something okay. on his timesheet. I understand. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Um, if we are going back to September, same kind of thing with Bob and I. He had put on the meeting with you, Jason, that you requested, and you mm -hmm. requested. <coughs> For me to come in for a meeting and I didn't put that on. Well, it's the same scenario as that. Right. So can I go back and put it on then? I don't think you can because we're approving them as they were presented. But can I add it to another month? Is what I'm saying. I don't know that. What well, nobody asked me to ask them that, so I, I don't I know. know. I didn't done ask that in anybody. I know we past where you can put stuff on to a previous month. Do you know that answer, Roslyn? I. Or to a. I've never done that. I don't know. I would think if you went to something, you should. You know, if you 
it should be paid for. I, I know when I've missed meetings before, I can add them on to a previous month. What you say when you, you miss putting them on the on Yes, the I made the meeting. I'm right. sorry. Yes, I no, didn't I agree, the Dana. I made I, the meeting, and I might not have put it on in September because, let's say, it was September 30th, and timesheets were already called, or I just was September 15th. But, I mean, September. I don't have any problem with you being You know what, you know what I would do, Dana? Why don't you submit a separate timesheet next month for just that meeting mm -hmm. so we can prove that separately from your regular timesheet because it is a special So then situation. we can just presume them as they represented. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So who all are we getting time shoots for? Then we're gonna do for well, Dana. Well, Bob already did his. Okay. So it would just be Dana, and then. Is Steve? If are Steve we adding Steve? If he wants to, you're not 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 required to, but if he wants to, it's, it'd be and, fine. And I also had a meeting with the supervisor. That wasn't on budget. before that meeting. No, that was this. Wasn't that in wasn't October? That wasn't in September. I thought it was in September. No, it was before the budget meeting for the before, before the, the budget, budget workshop. Meeting. Yeah. So it should have been on this one if you were going to do that. Well, if I can make well, another. Well, I didn't know I could. And if I can make another point also, and uh, last meeting when we delayed acting on the timesheets, I was under the impression that it was only my timesheet that was called into question, and I didn't have a problem with that. I wasn't sure what the answer was. <coughs> or, excuse me. However, all timesheets for all the trustees were postponed a month, which is in violation of the Fair Labor Standards Act. If they if they do the work, they have to be paid. You can't say, well, we're not going to pay you this month. That's something we have to be aware of. That, uh, well, I mean, I can't pay them if it's not approved, unfortunately. I understand what you're saying, but I, that I, was, I, I think what that it. came down to, Bob, it was an oversight. It, it, had we thought it the rest of the way through, we could have, at the end of the meeting, at least approved the approved timesheets and we just didn't and just, i don't just, think it was worth calling another meeting no i know it's just sheets. something we need to keep aware of yeah, it, it was a one-off bob all right is there any other questions all right can we get a roll call on motion one please thurman no Unruh. yes blair yes broughton yes Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, can we get a roll call on motion two, please? Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Motion carries. All right. That brings us to the second unfinished business item. Present. This was a resolution for Zarita SAD number two. Because we have to, because we only had it for two years, we actually are going out to five years, so we have to amend the cost, which the cost estimate is going to be the 12000 So that 10000 is incorrect that's on that sheet. So when I do the final resolution, I'll amend that to the $12,260. $12,000. All right, so do you need a motion for this, Roswell? I'm sorry, it's 12650 okay, good. 650, you said? Yes. That's correct. Thank you. All right, I, do you want a motion for this? Yeah, I'm gonna need a motion. Okay, I will make a, you know is there something else that needs to be suggested? Um, so how it's worded here, we're, Leave it at ten thousand. I'm sorry. That should be left at ten thousand. Then what are we changing? It's gonna say at ten thousand. Okay. So the number I just gave you is just gonna stay how it is on the agenda or on the resolution. Where does the twelve thousand six fifty go? That's It'll be on the um, that twelve thousand six hundred and fifty is with the fifteen percent administrative fee. Okay. And the attorney fees. Yeah. Okay. So it's So then you want it as present presented then? Correct. Okay. I will make a motion to pass the resolution amending Zarita SAD number two, estimated cost of projects as presented. I'll second it. Okay. 
Uh, let's do a roll call on that, please. Andrew? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. Kip Palmer? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. <coughs> Rumble? Yes. Okay, that brings us into our new business. Um, item A and B were added. They were at your spot when you got in here today. We had some issues come up this past week with some stuff happening in the office. Uh, and there was township business being discussed by a trustee to the employees in relation to the wage scale. And there was even a spreadsheet of points that was put together that was disseminated to employees but wasn't provided to the elected officials and no communication was made to the elected officials. And no questions were asked of the supervisor about this and I was not provided a copy of that document. And I spoke with the attorney and he said that that should not happen. That caused a significant disturbance to the township offices and to our work being completed for several days. To prevent future issues with such actions, it's necessary to require trustees to have an appointment to come to the office to address with the employees, excluding personal visits where no business is discussed, picking up packets, subcommittee meetings, and board meetings. So we can be prepared for such a visit and provide, be provided the same information being disseminated to the employees. Also, if a trustee has something they want to give the employees, that should come through the supervisor's office. Uh, this has been I spoke to the township attorney about this and this is approved by the township attorney. So I will make the suggested motion that trustees need to schedule an appointment through the supervisor's office should they wish to come to the office to address employees for reasons other than personal visits or no vis township business is discussed, picking up the board packets, subcommittee meetings or board meetings. Support. Thank you. Can I just ask one question? Yes. What if I wanted to just talk with Roslyn or Scott, the treasurer or the clerk, is no that problem. different? Yep. Okay, I don't have to go through you to schedule Correct. to talk to Roslyn or Scott about something I see on the clerk stuff or yes. treasurer stuff. Okay. Absolutely. So I just, um, or if I wanna to talk to another trustee regarding anything, this is just employees in Correct. the office. Okay, I just wanna make sure I understand what I need to do. <laughs> yep. I don't wanna correct you, but I did receive one of those. So oh. you said all elected officials. That's right, so you I did. Just wanted to. Sorry. That's all right. Most elected <coughs> officials did not receive it. <coughs> receive what? I'm sorry. I'm uh, there was some spreadsheet or something that oh, she okay. handed out to the employees. Anything? I have yeah. no idea. All right. So if there's no other questions, I would like a roll call on this vote, please. Blair. Yes. Broughton. Yes. De Palma. Yes. Marshall. Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Motion carries. And we also had another item come up this week with a trustee as well, uh, allowing individual trustees to unilaterally seek opinions from the township attorney as opposed to requests from the supervisor's office exposes the township to excessive legal expenses. If a trustee has an issue they believe needs a legal opinion, opinion, the issue must be brought to the supervisor's attention. And if the supervisor deems necessary, it will be addressed to the township attorney by the supervisor. To prevent abuse of township funds at tr a trustee's sole discretion and without supervisor's knowledge or consent, this motion is necessary. And this was also provided by the township uh, attorney. So I would like to make the suggested motion that any and all requests made of the township attorney for legal advice and or opinions must be authorized by the board or come from the supervisor's office. Support. Thank you. How I, much money, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. How much money did that cost for that phone call? I have not got that bill yet. We have an estimate? Well, I think he charges about $250 an hour, so th most attorneys don't do less. I understand. Okay, for, for less than an hour. Can I ask what happened? I had no idea anything about this either. Uh, Stuart called me this morning and said Kathy contacted him and asked for a legal opinion for the board. Regarding? Can I ask what it was regarding? Uh, he didn't actually tell me what it was regarding, but he I said he wasn't going to do it without my permission. Okay. I was just curious what was going on. So I don't really know either. but. Okay. And th this whole uh, motion, this is not unusual. I know the, the village had to act in the same regards because you can't, we can't just have seven people calling Stuart every time, Correct. every time something that we don't get our way on an agenda item, we can't call the, the attorney, you know? It, it, what I find unfortunate about this, 
Excuse me, Scott. I thought you. Were no, done. I'm done. I am done. What I find unfortunate about this is the the last supervisor made it very clear to the township uh, trustees that they could not contact the attorney. Yes, you did, Kathy. I did not. But you could not, for exactly the reason that Scott uh, stated, you can't have seven people, separate people, calling the attorney. Well, I know the reason why I, I asked what was going on, because I remember when we were dealing with Sleepy Howell, and I was dealing with that a lot. I did, but I know that Kathy or the board knew I was calling. Right, you had permission. For some stuff like that. I had direction, and I just right. wanted to make sure. Again, understand what's happening here, so... Yes. Um, it was an email that was sent to Stuart, and it was for clarification. I had a question. Well, he told me that you called him, so I can only go with what he told me. That's fine, but I didn't call him. I sent him an email. Contact. You contacted, contacted, contacted him. him. Yes, point. I did. I did contact him, and um, I I was under the impression that um, the attorney was hired by the board. I didn't. And I and I do Stuart know the made supervisor. This He's 100 percent okay with it. He said it's 100 percent under my authority as the executive officer, author, uh, executive officer of the township. And I do understand that the um, supervisor is the legal agent for the township. Mm -hmm. But I was just looking for a clarification, um, and so. <coughs> well, then you need to contact to me and let me know. Okay. Can we get a roll call vote on this item, please? Broughton? Yes. Alma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? I'm, mm -hmm. I'll say um, I'll say no, because I'm still not sure about it. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Rumba? Yes. Motion carries. All right, that brings us to the detective sergeant position. <laughs> Greg, would you like to come up? Um, our uh, caseload since the uh, COVID restrictions, uh, times have kind of changed for us. Um, the position for the sergeant's position was a detective sergeant's position uh, when this all come about. And I asked to have it taking uh, uh, the, our, our caseload as far as in the detective bureau uh, between the uh, substation detective and the school resource officer was way down as far as the caseload. Um, it has skyrocketed. If you look at the paper at, at just a portion of the articles that I give them, you start getting an idea of the, the nature of some of these calls. Uh, and if you have any type of investigation background of, of what it takes to, to close uh, some of these cases. So our, our caseload has really uh, been on the increase in uh, the detective bureau as well as the schools. Uh, I don't give uh, the paper a lot of our school incidents because uh, they often involve minors um, and they are very lengthy investigations. Um, sergeant Hubble is a patrol sergeant. He's been here for almost six months and I have not had him on patrol more than probably two or three times. He has been strictly assisting the detective bureau which causes a problem for us because within our union they are two different positions at a different cost. Um, as a patrol sergeant, he has been voluntarily taking uh, phone calls from our patrolmen at all different times of the day and night after hours. Technically, by answering those phone calls and dealing with those situations, whether it's a five minute interaction or a four hour interaction, he gets to put in for three hours of overtime. It would be fiscally unresponsive or un uh, not responsible to not bring this to you guys because uh, the nature of those calls and as many as there are throughout a year, uh, if he put in for that overtime, would triple the number that I've given you as far as to take the spot back to a detective sergeant. As a detective sergeant, I can still use him on the road patrol, but I can't use him back in the detective bureau because it is a different classification. There is a different. Uh, cost that comes with and there's a clothing allowance uh, there's a difference in a vehicle um, that type of thing originally I gave you guys a figure uh, or I gave it to Jason of forty four hundred dollars forty four oh one I believe it was um, our money person downtown sent me an email um, on Friday that it's actually thirty four hundred dollars and fifty thirty four fifty two is the total uh, for twenty twenty two 
in 2023 it would go up to 3665 and in 2024 it would go up to 3890 which is still well below the initial cost that the department thought that it would would run um, you know times have changed uh, I mean just to give you an example we, we had a uh, we've had some issues within the schools with just narcotics um, I, do, I do not farm out a lot of our cases to our other units within the department I, I've always had the mindset you catch them you clean them uh, I have done most of that type of work um, so I don't need to farm it out um, so often just for instance uh, we have a we have somebody coming down from Flint selling narcotics to seventh and eighth graders and when I come in and I include Sergeant Hubble these are lengthy investigations we're in at night for two or three hours doing narcotics type work and that overtime is substantial and that's just one case that I can think of so there there is a big difference and I would that's the reason I'd like to make it back to a uh, detective sergeant position because of the cost um, if I leave him at that uh, right now and he takes overtime which he hasn't been for every time he takes a phone call at night that's three hours of overtime if it's one minute technically right. and it would just supersede that 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 uh, overtime bill would be astronomical as opposed to thirty four hundred dollars Thank you, Greg. Uh, I will go ahead and make the suggested motion. I'll, I'll support. <laughs> <laughs> Try to harmonize it next time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Always. All right, who's, who's taking that one? <laughs> Dana? Okay, I'll All take right. it. Any questions? Yes. Yes. So we got one, I don't know the makeup of the substance. You got one lieutenant, one admin sergeant, patrol sergeant. That's right patrol now. sergeant. It's clerical. basically administrative, yes. How many deputies on the road? 13. 13. Or about three, six, nine. Nine patrolmen. Nine patrolmen. Yeah. One patrol sergeant. How many detectives? Two. Two. School resource officer, which is a, we split that cost of that time with the school. So one um, and a half detectives. Correct. And the major caseload is coming from the, for juveniles? It's, it's not for the juveniles. It's our regular caseload that's coming in through the detective. But the problem is he's been so overwhelmed with just the regular cases um, that it's building up and Sergeant Hubble has had to help him on those cases with interviews, running around, doing interviews, for, that type for, of thing. Because I don't have any numbers in front of me. When you talk about caseloads, I can read a caseload sheet, you know, run sheet. I don't have anything like that. So I'm trying to decipher here because to me it boggles me a little bit that we have a lieutenant in charge of just a substation. Seems, don't you think the, we're a little top heavy? We got, we're going to have a goal right no here. Means. If you had half an idea of. I do. Not, not, I don't think you do if you're asking me this question. Because I volunteer a ton of time, not only as a patrol taking calls and running the administrative stuff. So I, I'm getting the, the impression that you think I sit behind the desk. Nope. And that I don't take calls and you don't see me out stopping cars. And that's not the case. The amount of time that I volunteer way over what, what my pay grader is my rank is unlike any substation you're going to see in the county and that is the fact so we got extra because we were voted kind of we're not voted taught we were the safest township in like america a couple of years ago what happened there's a reason for that and that's because of the hard work that we we no, do what happened closing those type why, of did cases. They, why did we how are we being proactive to keep the crime down if we got nine and and the detective's position is reactive not proactive right investigative units are reactive the crime has already Sometimes. happened, and they're going to go out and find out who did it. Patrolmen, deputies of the uniform, are proactive. Broken window theory, right? Those detect those those oh, statistics right. are based on closed cases and arrests, <clears throat> and certain cases that the FBI tracks. That's not on every case. If you look right now, and I just gave this to Jason a couple of weeks ago, we are one of the safest townships in the state again which has been that way since I've been here, which for the, for the last five, six years, that was not the case prior to that. So you get a lot more out of myself and Sergeant Hubble than you will any Sergeant or Lieutenant in any substation in this county. Um, so I don't, I, I don't, I'm not sure what you're asking me there. Well, the difference of being proactive and reactive, because investigative units are reactive. Not all the time. And you say we have an influx of crime coming into town, in the township. Correct. So what has changed? We got a group that has come in here and started creating this crime. Can we put a finger on it? Some. 
you know, if we got a crew that's come in here, because some get that and they start breaking into places a lot. So that's why I'm asking, instead of, and you switch over to a reactive group, you're just following up behind everybody. Are you, at, are you trying to tell me that by myself or Sergeant Hubble coming up, trying to find out and arrest a doper that's coming out of Flint into our townships, not reactive? No, I'm not asking anything. I'm that's asking questions. I'm not telling you anything. I'm asking questions of, of what are we doing here? What, I mean, if we got went from one of the safer ones and all of a sudden we got a huge crime load, what happened? It's, it's that, like I said, that those statistics are based on closed cases and arrest, not open cases. If I told, if I put a cease on my detectives and didn't have them out there closing cases and make an arrest, you wouldn't make the top 25. That is based on closed cases and arrest. And I'm kind of offended by that because my guys work their butt off closing never said that. cases and making arrest. And that's how those statistics are. I never said that, that, that they weren't working hard. I'm just looking at the modality. Well, you sound like you're, you make it sound like we're not very proactive. And I'm telling you, you have to be well, proactive I'm asking to close question, those cases. I'm asking questions about the versus because when you put somebody into a detective position, it's reactive, right? Not all the time. My guys are proactive. As, my guys have, have a harder time being proactive because of we are understaffed. But I'll tell you what, you sure see my guys out there every day pounding those streets. They're not sitting in that substation, and that's being proactive. Mm -hmm. And former, that's how those cases come to us. As a former detective, I can, I can say that detectives can be uh, proactive as part of the I was job. a detective 20 years out of my career. For somebody to tell me that's not proactive, you're sadly mistaken. I can tell you I saw Lieutenant <laughs> pulling over a car just last week at the middle school because the yeah. middle school was getting out and he came and pulled over somebody and I stopped more cars than probably half of our patrol patrolmen. I wasn't asking of your integrity, Lieutenant. Well you're you're well, you're questioning are, are we proactive? No, I'm just asking the modality of everything. I think that was made that very clear. Well let me ask you this. If if Sergeant Hubble puts in for overtime Every time he's called in when it's not his classification, and I send you guys an overtime bill at the end of the year, that's twelve to fifteen thousand. Do you think that's fiscally responsible for me? Well, if the because that's exactly what that bill would be. If if the work is is needs to be done, I mean, it's probably cheaper than buying another uh, police officer, correct? I'm not asking for another another officer. I'm asking no, to upgrade the detective sergeant, the patrol sergeant, so that he can assist in in those detective bureau cases that's what i'm asking at a at a cost that is a fraction of what it would be if he put in for overtime i'd like to yeah uh sergeant hubble thank you for taking the pass on the overtime <laughs> I, I know how that can that can rack up the uh, the dollars uh, no, 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 yeah well thank you I i'm going to tell you you guys I, I when it comes to myself and sergeant hubble being residents in this township you have no idea how much time, actual time, we put in of our own that we do not take overtime, that we either actually take comp time. If I turned in my overtime to you and his overtime, you wouldn't be able to add another position. And we take that on because we enjoy this township and we take pride in how we handle things out here. And we take pride in that statistic every year, which was not a statistic that was even talked about prior to my arrival. Any no, question on that really bothers me. I have a question for you, too. Uh, I know there, I understand there's a difference in uh, bargaining units. Has this already been approved that he can become a detective sergeant? And, or, because obviously he's dedicated, and I appreciate his dedication, but I don't want to get somebody else in here that may not be as dedicated. Well, there, they, there, there, there is some reason for, for this. There, there was specific reasons that I don't want to discuss in front of the public okay, right. about why I wanted to take that position. It, it, originally, it was a detective sergeant, right. but We're our, our, our caseload, what right. that's what the position yeah. was, but we, our caseload because of COVID had plummeted. Right. Since the COVID restrictions have come up, not only have, have, has our caseload doubled, so has the fire department and everybody else around us. That sergeant that was here, I didn't feel was doing the, the job as I wanted it as a detective sergeant. Well, and that's so I pushed him out to the road because I didn't need him in there and minor things that came up, I could answer those questions for the DB. That was part there. of my concern. Is, a, is the bargaining unit for the detective sergeants going to uh, be resistant to Sergeant Hubble 
taking that position. No. Okay. Absolutely right. not. I, I've right. already, I've run this through our our downtown and that and through the chain of command, uh, and and it is strictly up to the board. Okay. Great. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I yeah. want to thank you, Lieutenant and Sergeant Hubble, for your work. I I support this. I know that. We did have this position. We dropped it because of COVID, and I understand it's needing to be back because I've seen you guys at hard at work. So, yeah, the, 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 the articles you see in the paper are only the ones that I give the paper, and and I, I'm very I'm cautious of what I give the paper, and and so for the most part, other than be able to hand you statistics of every single case that we investigate, it'd be it'd be 15 pages long, and I don't I don't give those out for a reason. Thanks, Greg. Thanks. Thank you. All right, uh, Lisa, can we have a roll call, please? Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes, and I, I, I just wanted to add, I didn't get a chance to say anything, but I also wanted to thank you, and I had a conversation with uh, Lieutenant Glover today, and I understand that doing it this way is going to change, to save the township some money, so I'm all for it. So my, I'm, yes. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, that brings us to our wage schedule amendment. Uh, we met October 11th, 2021 special meeting budget workshop to discuss the employee wages. And then this is what came away from that meeting. So I will go ahead and make the motion to approve the amended township wage scales as presented. Support. with an effective date of January 1, 2022. Support. Thank you, Bob. All right, any discussion? Yes. Go ahead, Scott. We pulled out this sentence, but if, to remain consistent, I think we should pull out all three of those sentences. That we were, they were just added last year. And I watched the last year's meeting, and these sentences that were added didn't even get discussed because we were, we were focused on getting employees raises, and we didn't discuss some of the extra verbiage that was added at the last minute. And all three of those lines where it talks about you're always going to get the same raise as your superior, they, they need to they need to be removed. So what are you talking about? The super line? Th there's, there's a line that I says the supervisor will earn 5,000 yeah, more in the clerk. That should go. The highlighted line and that you one. have in there should go, and then there's also one in there that says part-time clerical employees will earn two hours less yep. than full-time employees. That should go. I, I just I, I, gearing one person's wage against another. I just I haven't heard of such a thing before until and I read it here. Should it be down to then the part-time van drivers also? I don't want to speak for Faye, so I I don't know. I I guess I guess that's our control. I would. I don't know if that's going to, yeah, I know, but it, that's under senior center. And so I don't, I'm not directly involved in that. I guess Rosalind could, would be better to answer that question. Well, I will tell you this. We do not have any full-time senior van drivers and she doesn't want any. So then it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. Correct. So then we should pull it out. I would say we should pull it then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's one, the one highlighted and then three additional sentences. Yeah. So it'd be the supervisor earned 5,000 more than the clerk treasurer. Uh, the highlighted, the part-time clerical employees earn $2 less than full-time clerical, and then the part-time van drivers will earn one fifty less than full-time drivers. And the rate, the hourly rate for the deputies, that should stay because that's what they're... Yeah. The, well, it's not the hour to the hourly rate deputies. Oh, yeah, in addition to hourly rate. So that's just their stipend. Yeah, that should stay because they need to be paid for their stipend. Yep. All right, I will amend my motion to remove all those sentences. I'll support so, the amendment. Okay. Hold on, I need to write this down. Remove the four sentences. Okay, Kathy. Okay. Um, so <coughs> this was all put in place because we had to amend everybody's wages because the... Um, supervisor ended up making eight thousand dollars more than the clerical and or i'm sorry the clerk and treasurer which i don't think was the intention that when those wages were put into place um also what why these sentences are in here is so everybody moves up together and by taking this out and i um 
not, not for the one that you just took out, but for the one referring to the clerical, it's taking away a benefit that they're receiving, and it's a monetary benefit. It's also capping it. If we don't get a raise, they don't get a raise. True. Exactly. So it's it, 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 it doesn't I would need rather to us, so we're not taking a raise, and see the employees be able to take that benefit. Mm -hmm. Saying they can't well, get, get a raise if we don't. Okay. So um, that's silly. But also, in the past, that's not been the way things have been. Well, you never know what's going to happen and, in the future. And the other thing, okay, so um, <coughs> let me read to you what I gave to the employees. And, and, and since we're changing something that affects our clerical, I was disappointed that the officials hadn't talked to the clerical about what was going on and what I was being discussed. I actually did talk to my entire office. Okay. Well, and when I came in, I did speak to Rosalind, but um, you and Scott were not here, so I didn't speak to you at that time, but um, well, you it was caused like a significant disturbance in the office for several days, and it was unnecessary. Okay. Well, I'm sorry that happened. I but, know, but you um, knew it was going to happen. It was gonna happen. Well, let me – I didn't know I was going to make a, a disturbance, yes, but I did know that I was going to um, – say something that the clerical employees would want to look into. Okay. Um, so let was this a policy that was been a policy for 20 years or no, well, no. this was a policy that was put in last November. Correct? Yeah, so you added it on our way out. Last two weeks. Because I as well years. went back to all of those or the minutes and I also went back to watching on the videos and I did not see this discussed anywhere. I could not find anywhere where this was part of the discussion. When you talked about wages, um, you guys talked about that, but nowhere at the board meeting was it discussed. And then I was kind of lost because how is there seven people on a board that didn't pick up that those sentences were put in there too? So was that something that was discussed at a workshop? I no. think no. It wasn't discussed at the no. workshop? No, uh, these were added after you met with me and Scott when you were trying to give yourself oh, okay. a $4,000 bonus on the way out, and we told you you couldn't do that. And this was your retaliation for that. I think at that time... That was my retaliation. It was. Kathy. It was. Retaliation uh, to give... Yeah, and also not giving us our raises for six months. That part I added in. Yeah, yeah. you added all because this in. Mm, you know, I just yeah. want to say that this has... This has been a very difficult um, coming to the board. This has kind of given me a hard time because I feel like I've been thrown into a triangle mm -hmm. that I should not be thrown into. Mm -hmm. This was put in by you on your way out. You've now came and kind of but talked to the employees, but it by the causing board. division is what it's doing. And because of that, mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time with this whole even being in there. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see the employees do good. I want to see them, you know, get raises before we do. I don't care if I don't ever take a raise again as long as, as the employees are receiving a benefit because they're here and I'm an elected official. But just after everything that's been going on, this, I just can't. <laughs> it's not, I just don't think how things went down was it right and now we're, after it was put in, and all the problems that have been created, something's not right here. Well, I'd, I'd just like to throw out the challenge. I would challenge anyone to show me where and what business, private sector, public sector, where an employee's wage is dependent on what the boss is making. Anywhere. Anywhere. Right. Anywhere. Nowhere. That is not done anywhere that I know. And I'll throw out the challenge. If anybody can bring me something, I'll take a look at it, but I cannot think of a single place where an employee's wage is dependent on what the boss is making. Scott, that's not a good plan to do that. Have have worse f price fixing in between the two. Right. I, don't, I don't understand why this would be brought up. You know, I watched the but meeting again for this because we focused on increasing employees' wages and these, these extra verbiage lines just were not discussed because we spent roughly a half hour talking about getting people's raises. Um, this, this has caused a lot of consternation in the office, Kathy, and I'm at a further disadvantage because my employee has a relationship with one of your family members, and you use her as a pawn 
to come in and stir up trouble in the office, and I don't like it. Well, I don't I like it. I can say I wasn't happy last year. I just went back to the meeting minutes no, to kind of keep. I was not upset. happy with what was going on. One, it was difficult. We were in Zoom, and I hate Zoom meetings. I'm so glad we're back in a person. It was very difficult to get information, to meet with people, to talk with people, to see what was going on. And I did vote no last year, and it wasn't because I, I was worried about what money was going to happen with COVID. I was worried about the economy. I was worried about just the trickle effect, because we're still seeing the trickle effect, as you can see, with money and inflation and getting products and stuff like that. So it wasn't that I didn't think the employees deserved a raise, but I was not happy about the way things went into place for the supervisor, this wording, nothing. So I had voted no. And I just want to say that I'm sorry you feel that way, Rosalind, but I know I made it clear last year I wasn't happy with any of the stuff. So I'm no, very I did. happy I to actually, take that out. I just wanted did. to make I that very clear. I listened to the whole board meeting. It was just. Yeah, last year was just, it was terrible what was trying to be put into place. So I mean, I do think, I know that the girls in my office, they do a good job. So would I like to see increases for them? Absolutely. But but this hinders them more than helps them. Correct. Yes, I'm not saying they don't deserve w increases. I'm saying it should be based on how you perform and that, you know, we do need to, you know, increase as, you know, cost I plan on, goes I plan on having a wage study. I'm gonna do a subcommittee for this, so we're gonna address these issues. But um, I don't think these this wording is the way to go. I don't either. Yeah. And, and I don't have any problem with us re-looking at this, but what my intention was was to pattern it after the way that um, wages are calculated at the fire department they're not even comparable it's oil and water yeah that's that's completely different not even remotely comparable that's a pair that's a paramilitary organization it is not what we're doing here uh, this was my attempt i i'm not saying um, I'm, I was just trying to make sure that everybody got increases all at the same time so it wasn't where the people at the high end went high real high and the people at the low end went lower I was trying to make things so that they would um, m so everybody move up together well, and because we had a lot of complaints too about us not paying our um, clerical enough for new employees so that the job doesn't look as attractive if we're not if we don't have a good enough salary and I was trying to figure out a way to keep the salaries moving up what I, what I did, find what the, sorry sorry go ahead the way you do that is instead of saying everybody gets a two percent raise well yeah then if you if everybody gets a raise then everybody's moving up two percent the higher is going to stay higher what it should be is a raise based on how you perform so if someone's performing good maybe they could get a three or four percent yeah, raise. how do you do and that we, in a we, place and like we've, this. we've gone tough. back and forth with on that dana and I'm it's just, just saying though but you can't if if you're saying you're doing a two percent raise it needs to be a two percent raise across the board so yes you're going right. to have the higher people get a higher raise because that's what two percent is on a higher salary so I don't know how you fix that but but these sentences don't fix it no. no right what I find disconcerting is that a trustee put themselves in a position of HR and dealing with the employees on a pay issue that's well, not our job especially because then if it's going to cause work issues inside exactly. the departments that then their super the clerk or the treasurer or the supervisor has to deal with that's right. not right, right. And they no, have no to notification to the supervisor either they work um, okay so the what I gave to the employees and and I've worked with all of them and so I have I feel I have a relationship with them not all of them there's a couple of new ones um, but you're not the supervisor anymore. Can I understand that. Your duty. Um, depending on depending how percentage increases are calculated, clerical employees will see their wage. Uh, if we take out the sentence, decrease between three hundred and four hundred and fifty dollars per year. And that's, and I can <coughs> I I didn't share my calculations, but I can share sure. them with you if you want. Siri, I already read your thing. I, Got a good chuckle out of it. Why would you put okay. yourself in that position to deal with the pay of the employees as a, as a individual? Because because I was the person that put this into place, and I wanted to make sure it was 
being carried out. And that's that's no, where that's I'm not exactly yeah. how it goes, Kathy. We had a budget meeting where we had voted this out, and you didn't like this the fact that we voted it out, so you thought you'd go directly to the employees instead. That's what happened. And the, the and that was that's at the exactly budget meeting. It was not voted on we, at the yeah, budget meeting. It was suggested that we were it was suggested on that, it. Yes. It, and that happened at the very end of the budget meeting. And I don't think, you know, it's not something that was. Uh, presented to employees well, I'll go one step further you not only put yourself in a in a position where you had no business being you also put the employees in a very difficult position with their supervisors where you're pitting the employees against the supervisors that's that is so unprofessional all right I'm gonna call um, for a vote on this I, thank you I I'm would like a done. roll call vote I we're done I called for a vote but I am not finished. I have more. We, we've already read that. It's not going to change anything. Everybody's read it. I people don't that you I wanted think, to see. I it don't did. think Dana. The people Dana that you wanted to it. see, you got it. Well, every Dana asked a question. She wanted to know what was in it. I'm no, I just said that. I didn't see it. She didn't want to see it. She said she didn't see it. I said I just didn't see it, so I didn't know what truly totally happened because I didn't receive it. Um, I like the idea of having a workshop because I think the clerical staff is the backbone of the township and they do need to be compensated. We are compensating them. Correctly. We and, workshop. and we we did adjust wages, but I was just trying to keep everybody's wages going up at the same rate. That was my intention. And it got approved by the board. So now, now if you take it out, you're taking a benefit away from the employees. And that, that should be discussed at this workshop that you plan to have. Was it, I didn't say I was going to have a workshop. I said I was going to start a oh, subcommittee. A subcommittee. Okay, the subcommittee should take that up. Okay, I call for a vote again. Thank you. Roll call, please. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? No. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. DePalma? Can I just verify this is taking out those sentences that we're voting on? Correct, all four of those Okay, I just want to make sure I understand the right motion before I vote. Yes. Rumbo? Yes. Motion carries six to one. All right, that brings us to janitorial services. Um, at the August board meeting, we hired Stacy for janitorial services at the Senior Center. She's been doing a great job for us. We are currently in need of a new cleaning person for the township offices and the police substation. Stacy walked through the buildings with myself and Lieutenant Glover and uh, Karen and Pam and Stacy. Uh, I had her start cleaning the week of October 15th, 2021. So we didn't have a lapse in cleaning. Uh, Lieutenant Glover and myself now are recommending that we formally hire Stacy for cleaning at the township and the substation. Our policy allows the supervisor's discretion in setting the wages. Um, and then so because of that, the senior center coordinator and myself are also recommending that Stacy's wages for the senior center be increased to 1450 from 14 so that she's being paid the same rate for all three buildings. I guess that would only make sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know Rosalind wants to say something, but I'll, I'll let you finish. Yep. So I will make the three motions as they're presented. Support. Thank you, Bob. Support, support. I need to <laughs> abstain from the voting. All right, so Roslyn wants a motion to abstain from voting. Uh, so a second. Scott, okay. Support. Okay, so. So Scott and Bob made the abstain, so let's vote on the motion to abstain. Can we get a roll call on that, please? Do we need to know? Does it matter why? I don't know. Oh, I mean, she mentioned it at the last meeting. She's related to her. Oh, I didn't remember that. Sorry. Yep. Okay. So. I made so the motion. Scott made, no, you didn't. Scott made the motion, right? Well, I yeah. thought she had made the motion. If she didn't, I will make the motion. Then Bob. Can oh, I'm sorry. Or right. I thought you were just bringing it up. Oh no, I was going to make the motion okay. for well, it. Well, then you did. So Raz and <laughs> then I second it. Scott. Okay, sorry. Okay, so uh, motion to abstain for Rosalind to abstain from voting on these three motions. Uh, I'm just going to do a roll call on that, please. Andrew. Yes. Blair. Yes. Troughton? Yes. Diploma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Rumbo? Yes. Okay, motion carries. So motion one was 
uh, to hire Stacy for Daniel Torres Heal Services at the township at 1450 an hour for a minimum of three hours and maximum of six and use that wage line janitorial to pay for said janitorial services. Uh, can I get a roll call on that, please? Hold on, I just want to say something oh, real sir. quick. I just, this is just for her benefit, actually. Uh, it, she come, only comes into the treasurer's office once a week. I think she might be coming in a little bit more now. But it's night and day yeah, it's compared drastic to our difference. last cleaner. Uh, she's doing great. So that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Is that enough? I, I, I was questioning, is that enough hours? Is actually what I, when I yeah, look at it, is that enough? Yeah, she's she getting it done very well. She works. Yep. Okay. She's very efficient. No, that's fine. I mean, I just was like, I'm <coughs> sure we're getting it. I'm glad we found someone who's good. Yeah. yeah. It, it was tough. She's excellent. It's tough to find good help like that. And she uses chemicals, unlike our last cleaning lady. <laughs> 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 uh, so we have the, can we do a roll call on that, please? Just as to one. Yes, as the motion one. Thurman? Yes. Anru? Yes. Blair? Blair, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Rumble? Yes. All right. Uh, motion two was made by myself and supported by Bob. That is for the substation for a minimum of two hours per week, maximum of four hours per week as it was presented there. Um, roll call on that too, please. Unru? Yes. Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, and then the last motion is to approve the raising of her wage for the senior center from 14 to 1450 to make it equal to the other two buildings. Uh, motion by myself, supported by Bob. And we get a roll call on that too, please. Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, that brings us to the building renovation budget. Uh, as you guys know from the email I sent out, we had some significant water and or wind or snow or ice dam damages to the building. The wood underneath the siding was significantly rotted and the siding has fallen off the building in multiple places. So I was able to find somebody who was willing to come out and do that. It started out as just rehanging the siding and then it turned into the woods rotted to we have to replace the whole wall. Can I finish? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the west side of the building was completed at a cost of $8,260 for the construction contractor. He's also re agreed to do the east side of the building under the same issues. And he actually started that today. And that side could end up being less depending on the wood damage. There's less damage over there, but some of the damage is worse. And at this time, we haven't noticed any damage on the rear of the building. Um, I have began emailing MMRMA to see about a claim for this. But when the guy was out last week, he's not 100% certain there will be coverage for that. So I am asking that we transfer 16500 from the carry forward to cover the cost of the unbudgeted emergency repairs to the township building. And then you see the three motions there. So if I call them motions one, two, and three, I will make all three of those motions. Do you want anyone else to make motions? I got it handled. <laughs> well, I, I'm just saying I, I, at uh, MTA workshops, they, they kind of look down on the supervisor making all the motions. It's all a suggestion. <laughs> okay. None of that is required. Does anybody want to second the motions? Support. Thank you, Bob. Any issues or questions on these items? I have a question, if yep. you don't mind. I do not mind. Um, if you're looking into making a claim, can we just make sure that it's worth the claim versus if our insurance premium goes up? I know sometimes yeah. it's not worth to make claims. I emailed the yeah. claims lady and she, I just sent her the pictures and said, hey, you know, I, should I do a claim on this? And she said yes, but she's worried about it being covered. Okay, my concern so I, was I don't know that it will even get much, submitted. Right, my concern was is how much it costs and then versus how much could your premium go up, sure. number one. Number two, um, I know we just did some work around the building here. Was it, 
was that? That was the front. That was all only the front of the building. The front, and so this it's is this wall back. and that wall. <coughs> so it kind of went around the. No, they didn't they wrap didn't it all. Go to the side no, or just wrap? the front. Okay, I was just concerned because we just did all this work. Right. If it was nope. I know. You Unfortunately, it had nothing to do with them, so we can't go after them for it. <laughs> well, no, I wasn't trying to go after them. I was no, just I trying know, to figure out why it wasn't discovered if it was like in the wrap. It's I been there for a while. It's been there for a while. Some of that wood when he took the siding off, it was falling off the building. It's just a facade. Right. Uh, we, there's a cement wall behind this. Oh, yeah. And then they just slapped on some OSB or an strand board and then right. put siding on top of that. It's the strand board that's all rotted out. Well, but it's I, just a facade. When I came and looked at the facade when we were looking at approving it or not, I walked the building and, mm -hmm. you know, was looking to see. And I noticed in other places that things might need to be yeah, it, it's pretty, it is bad over there, but it's not near as bad as this yeah. side was. I'm glad that okay. we're addressing these issues. Um, I know Candy was, you know, worked in the clerk's <laughs> yeah. office for a long time, and she could smell she was mold right. for a long time. <laughs> she was and right. She was right. <laughs> there was a lot of yeah, there's significant mold on both sides. A lot sides. of it. Candy. I just wanted to compliment you on your quick action and getting this taken care of. Um, so you, I think you did a good job on getting it done, and Thank I was going to make the motions, but you already did. Oh, sorry. Okay, so with that said, can we get a roll call on motion one, please? Blair? Yeah. Yes. Rotten? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Rumbo? Yes. <coughs> motion carries. Uh, roll call for motion two, please. Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Blair? Yes. Uh, motion three, please. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. All right, motion's carry. Thank you. All right. Uh, the previously uh, budget line adjustment, the previously approved budget for 120500 the transfer in from the Land Water Conservation Fund number two from Park Development. Uh, at the October budget workshop, we discussed that, how that actually is for grant number three, but there was no grant number three line. So this is just a request to create grant number three and then move those funds into that line. So I'll make the motion. Thank I'll you. support. Dana and Roz, any questions on that? Okay. So can we get a roll call on that because we're moving money? Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Rumble? Yes. All right. Next is the resolution for uh, spending some of the American Rescue Plan Fund Act money. Uh, I received this from the Water Resources Commission and ourselves, Brandon, uh, Groveland Township, Holly, and I think it's Rose. The village. Rose yeah. Oh, and the Village of Ortonville mm -hmm. are all study looking to do a study of the feasibility of bringing sewers here from uh, Grand Blank area from Genesee County line, and Water Resources Commission has put together this resolution and proposal to spend $41,401 according to the table on the back here is our share which of the entire project Brandon Township's share is 20.7 percent of the initial study fees which include engineering attorney financial advisors and engineering reports they're estimating the initial project cost to be 200 grand to see if we can even bring it here and I will tell you as well, there is going to be a grant that is supposed to be done next month where we should be able to get 50% of these funds back from Oakland County. I just have to fill it out. And but then it's not available yet. That's per Mike's biz, right? Yeah, per Mike's biz, yep. I will, I will make this. Did you already make the motion? I did not. I'll make this motion. Okay, so. I'll support it. I don't know. There's no motion written. Well, it's, yeah, we don't do motions on the resolutions because you approve, approve the resolution. I approve the resolution. Approve the resolution yeah. then adopt the resolution. To adapt the resolution. Any other, other questions on that? Have you heard? I, I, I know Grove and Holly. Have you heard if the village is supporting this? They already, they already approved it at their council meeting two weeks ago. Okay. 
and we do it tonight and Groveland is tomorrow or Wednesday? Yeah. Tonight, right. I think. Tonight, tonight. Oh, I thought They're they met on Wednesdays. Yeah, they, uh, they did something different because yeah, of the election, tonight, I think. I got gotcha. you. So. Yeah, it's tonight, too. Okay. So we were the last two. The other two entities already approved this resolution. Okay. So. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Can, oh, and the uh, uh, sewer subcommittee does recommend this resolution to the board as well. I forgot to say that. Can we get a roll call, please? Yes. Diploma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. Rumble. Yes. Motion carries. And kind of in conjunction with that, now that we are moving or receiving the American Rescue Plan funds and spending some of them, we need to do some moving around excuse me, of those funds. So the bookkeeper has created all the necessary line numbers, which surprisingly is about nine different numbers to move money from two places. <laughs> so <laughs> we need to move $723,621, which is the remaining after the sewer resolution money from the general fund to designated and then transfer, the designated transfer in from general fund. I'll make that motion to move the money do you want me to read the motion or just the motion as presented? As yep, that's fine. Whichever you prefer. The motion as presented to move the funds. Okay. Support. And I adjusted those, Kathy, from your email after. So. And how are they going to get supported? Thank you. How will they get the 41000 Are they going to send us a bill? Or are they gonna yeah, they're supposed to send. I think they actually, they already, this was, well, I'll ask for a bill. I'll ask for an invoice. I'm sure he'll be happy to give you one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've already written. All right. Uh, can I get a roll call on that, please? Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Rumble? Yes. All right. So uh, that brings us to. Wait, did I put that in there twice? I did. I forgot to take that out. Hmm? Okay, sorry. That brings us to the no has. Uh, do we discussed participating in this? I've gotten further information from Oakland County. Uh, in 2019, it was a cost of $5,830 to us, which was f for 151 carloads from Brandon Township. Uh, that includes an administrative fee that they charge for participation in the program. And we did charge residents $10 per car in 2019 to keep us at that number. Uh, they're estimating our 2022 program fee to be $9,751. Uh, the cost has gone up significantly. Wow. Yeah, that's huge. They're estimating we'd get another 12 cars. <laughs> and so for 163, uh, do we still want to participate given the cost estimate? And do we want to charge more than $10 per car load? Uh, the lady that runs the program uh, told me that many communities do charge $15 per car. D but does that change our cost? Because right now, if you took 100... Yes, it would reduce our cost. Okay. It's still, if you took 163 cars by the 97.51, that's... 800 bucks. Yeah. 60 bucks. Calculator. If we did 163 times 5 bucks mm -hmm. is what? Like 800. Roughly 800, 800, 800 bucks. Yeah. 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 Is our cost of the ninety six fifty one after us charging the cars ten dollars each? Nope, that includes it. Okay, so if the hundred and sixty three cars pay ten dollars, then we pay the difference. No, then we pay the nine seven fifty one. So it doesn't include the ten dollars. Then you're saying she said it did include it. I'm just going off what the woman told me. I'm just surprised but by you're that. But you just jump. saying. But you just told me the app. Hold on. The nine nine thousand seven hundred and fifty one would be our cost. Yeah. And then our residents would pay ten dollars on top of that. No, not on top. That's included in that number. The, t the hundred and sixty-three cars, so the sixteen hundred and thirty dollars is included in that nine seven. Okay, that's what I was asking, and you said it two different ways. But Sorry. if only half that many showed up, then it would be, you know, it would be uh, half that cost. Well, no, it would. It would be. I think. Or if we get more. So it's like fifty dollars a car for us. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, it's $60 a car right now, including with the $10 fee, so it brings it to 50 for us. This includes us charging, right, 50 for us, that's right. what you just so said. The yes. total cost is 60 Right. Now, I know we skipped a year. Did she have We that's, skipped three years. We've been doing it every money. three years. 
Huh? So we haven't done it since 2017. That's 2019. Of money, yeah. so last that's year. a lot of money. Okay. So, yeah, so that's what I just said. We skipped last year, and now we're going to be, well, okay, semantics. It'll be 2022. Right. Um, did she say why it jumped so much? Uh, she said the cost of processing was the only thing she mm -hmm. said, the processing the materials, which makes sense. I mean, there's fuel on all those machines. and. I That's guess my question is, is for the residents, is there anything else that they can do that? Well, yeah, they can go to the, to the CGI locations at any time during the year, but then they're paying whatever the full cost is. Yeah, but that's a lot of money for us to spend $50 for 163 cars. Can but I ask a, something of someone in the, the audience? For the residents, the percentage of okay. residents uh, that use it. Bob, I know I saw you there a couple years ago. Would you have used to go to it again? Yes, and, and, and I would pay more money than that to get rid of what I wanted to get rid of. I put a significant amount of gas that was bad. Okay. That or else I was going to dump it on the ground. See, that's, that's, that's the point. That's why we need that's to That's exactly the point. I don't have a problem doing okay. it every couple of years. But I don't want to do sold. it every year. Right. But I'm sold. And that's coming from a former fire chief. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, close your ears, Dave. Close your ears. You wouldn't use it for your bomb to start your bonfire. Or anything. <laughs> All right. So, if, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think that's why we decided to do it once every three years. Yeah. Is just to get all of all of those contaminants out of the township. Um, but I think we need to just or we need to decide uh, because they want a volunteer at each um, collection site and so when I went um, I, I heard other people talking and they were all getting paid to be there mm -hmm. so I think we need to decide are we gonna pay people to be there or well, are we paid somebody at our cleanup one because nobody wanted to volunteer so we one of the parks people did it Right, but but I mean, even the um, say the trustees, if sure. they they go, um, yeah, so I mean it just a needs to, to be the township. So I think if they're going, they should be paid. I agree. And I mean, when I went, of course, I didn't. I was on salary, so I didn't expect to be paid or anything. Yeah, she told me that barely any supervisors go to it. <laughs> she said you were. I, one I've of the been few. to a few. <laughs> she said you were one of the few. Yeah. Here's my here's my thought though, if. I know we can't guarantee that we're going to do it every three years, but maybe when we do let our residents know what, that we're doing this, because my concern is you're doing it every three years, is are the residents really going to let the stuff stockpile at their house and wait for the next time that we have it, or are they actually going to just dump it on the ground, use it for their bonfire, and that type of stuff, and that's why we're not getting as many people. Maybe if the residents knew that we were doing it, maybe they would wait and not get rid of it other ways uh, that I think aren't that's the a right fair ways. Point. We could put it that is. in, I the, think we do a good in, the, in the assessment notices that get sent is. out. We'll mention that in addition to saying that we're participating in no has, we'll say this is our once every three years participation in no has. Right. Between that, so the newspaper, it, don't, don't and Facebook, I think right. that we, we could we'll do get the that website. Yeah. Township you know, website. and <laughs> she did actually tell me that the majority of the stuff from Brandon Township was electronics. Mm -hmm. and, and not fuel and paint. Y'all know about that some, but, <laughs> 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 but a majority of our cars were electronics. In my garage for almost two years. <laughs> to wait for it. <laughs> right, but how many people would actually wait? Like Bob, a lot of people would not just many. say, "I'm going to use it." Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. So it sounds like we want to do it. Do we want to keep the ten dollar fee, or would we want to go up to fifteen to reduce that a little for, by eight hundred bucks? I, are the other townships mostly doing fifteen? She said a lot of them do, but she didn't give me a specific. I number. don't think fifteen's bad. I mean, we had people come to the dump day that had a hunt, like ten tires and had to pay five dollars a tire, so they were paying fifty bucks a car. I, I don't think 15 is unreasonable either, but I don't think so. I'm don't okay. Think I'm okay with good. either. So the motion has already been made on this, right? No, I'll make the motion then. Okay, what fee? Uh, as presented right here. Oh, it's, no it's either or. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. It, I'm writing in fifteen dollars right 15? there. Fifteen. Okay. Right. So you're making the motion as presented with fifteen dollars. I'll support him. Too late. Steve oh. already did. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> 
Okay, we have a motion, and because we're going to be spending money, we'll go ahead and roll call it. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. Obama? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? I'm sorry, Rumbo. Uh, yes. Motion carries. All right, that brings us to my last item, thank God. It's not our last item. You my point. last item. It's oh, <laughs> our last item. I'm no, no, my last page. item. <laughs> so, uh, so these are the holiday schedule. Um, <laughs> some of the meeting dates have been moved around due to holidays, elections, and such. Uh, we did add the new holiday, federal holiday into the schedule here. So after this is approved, we will have to uh, update that in the policy as well. So... Um. Usually the clerk presents this, so I sent Rosalind an email. We also need to, if we're adding another holiday, we need to update the policy. That's it's literally what I just said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> okay. I, I like the Monday after Labor Day instead of the Tuesday after Labor Day. That's always a crazy day, so I like that change. Uh, any other questions on those? All right, does anybody want to make the motion to approve the holiday ske meeting and holiday schedule? I will. All right, thank you, Roz. Support. So we have a motion to uh, approve the 2022 meeting and holiday schedule as presented. Uh, we're not spending anything. We can do a uh, All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. All right. Okay, so at next up we have the Zarita SAD number two. This is confirming the assessment rule, which includes six parcels. Um, the cost estimate with the 15% is the $12,650 that we are confirming. Uh, we do have an admin fee of 15%. This is for 2022 through 2026. And this is um, $2,530, and it's split over that five years. Any questions? I do not. This is the third time we've I can make a motion. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution confirming Zarita SAD number two, special assessment role as presented. Thank you, Kathy. I'll go ahead and second that. All right, uh, because it's a resolution, we'll do a roll call. Blair? Um, mm, before we do a roll call, okay. um, I think this SAD is fine. Um, the one thing that I was just concerned about is the rest of our SADs are being charged 5% and this one's at 15%, but other than that, I see nothing wrong with the SAD. Well, that's by court order. Correct, but according to our attorney, we can bring that down. We don't, as long as we don't go up. Yeah, but 15% of 12,000 is like 170 bucks. So how do you, if we charge them 5%, it's going to be like pennies. It would it would be a third of what it, we would the the rest of the township uh, residents would be paying for it then because we've gone way well over 150 dollars in cost. Okay. Well, you're not wrong, but it is by court order. It, the maintenance of it is a court order, correct? <coughs> All right, so we do the roll call now. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Motion and carries. You know what, just for the camera purposes, in, uh, last year they were paying 1343 a year now they're paying 421 it has so we, went down significantly significantly yes. it has yeah. i just wanted to show and that you know yes okay. no it's going to be on your winter bill your winter bill is going to be yeah it, I, this winter bill will be 421 yeah all right that brings us to legault okay. boulevard number two so we have uh, another SAD that's confirming the assessment role for Legault Boulevard. Um, attached in your packet, you will see, um, we did have an email that was sent out 
um, from a resident. So attached to the resolution, you will have the email that I was presented with. I know I've seen some of your looks before when it was presented like, oh, I never got one. <laughs> it's in your packet. Um, Could I respond to that email? Why'd you look at me? Because you're next to me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, if you want to. I'll so um, when she's done presenting, when you're done presenting, I just want to respond. No, I realized I read this one and I, because that's where I read it at, so. Nope, that's okay. I just wanted you guys to know that it was given out. Yep. Um, I know with the concern but so I hope that you guys had time to look through your board packet and read over that letter um, so with the Legault Boulevard it is um, so it's assessing in the sum of two hundred and sixty nine dollars and seventy four cents a year for the five years they um the Legault Boulevard does have a surplus of twenty one thousand dollars so that surplus that they're going to carry over is not to exceed the $21,000. And it's for five years. So Kathy, go ahead whenever. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm in favor of the special assessment, mm -hmm. but um, my question is, do we want to postpone this to allow the, um, I don't know if it's a road can't postpone it. Can't postpone if we it. postpone it, it won't be on the text. But it won't be? Oh, okay. Um, We're already past the deadline at this point. Okay. Um, then maybe we need to keep in mind for the next time around um, that maybe they want to make a provision for adjacent properties owned by the same property owner and then they can bring that to the township board and we can include it next time. And that but would be fine, but that's something that for the homeowners is, I, I think right. sometimes well, there's that's a what misnomer that's what that we control that. No, is, we, no, we is, don't. We're, it's we're what they ask us to do. Just to pass it. But, but they probably don't understand that that might be something they can do. And I just wanted to bring up the point that um, Lake Louise Special Assessment District is set up that way, that we're adjoining parcels so we're on other sides that we did. Okay. That that particular issue wasn't brought up at our last meeting, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the sad's already been created. Uh, like I said, we're past the deadlines at this point. I understand that. Uh, now that I mean that it was pointed out that we can't postpone it, but just for next time around, we need to. They need to do something, not us. Well, this and and I don't and I don't know if who's contacting them or maybe that's something that you could relay to them. There's been plenty of talks with our township attorney working on all of these ads. Okay. All right, does anybody want to make the resolution? All right, I'll make the resolution confirming Legault Boulevard SAD number two special assessment role as presented. I'll support. <coughs> uh, so, uh, can we get a roll call on that? Bratton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Rumbo? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, Scott, you're up. Okay, the new hire. This is really housekeeping. Uh, Kathy had pointed out to me a couple months ago now um, that even with a part-time employee, uh, I really needed to bring it before the board. It was, this is not a new position that got created. I was just filling it with because somebody else had left. And her name's Kelly Dotson. She's been working out pretty well. And so I'd like to, uh, my suggested motion is to hire Kelly Dotson, Dotson as assistant treasurer with a start date of April 26th is when, is when she started at the, 200, at the 2021 starting wage rate as of April 26th. So I just want to be clear, we're not, I'm not trying to get proactive pay or anything like that. Or not proactive. Retro retro retroactive. Retroactive. I don't know why I said proactive. For part time clerical staff. I'll second that. Okay. Scott and Steve. Almost called you Bob, sorry. Um Scott, what did you mean by you're not trying to get retroactive pay? I don't I just wanted to be clear that I, you know He's since not trying to give her the twenty twenty two wage. Yes. Oh twenty twenty two. Yeah. He's yeah. just going back. Yeah. That's at least that's my understanding. It is. That's why I said at the starting wage rate at what it was at the time. Yep. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Andrew? Yes. 
Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Motion carries. Oh, he's got that to you too, right? Yes, this one's uh, not just housekeeping. This one's a little more interesting. One thing I've learned uh, in the year that I've been here is that for new hires and for part-time eligible folks that are here for even a long time, they really lose out because of the fact that the township building closes for so many holidays. Uh, in the next roughly month and a half or so, we're going to have seven days off. And these part-time folks that have been here, you know, six months, they don't get paid. And that's a tough thing to, in my opinion, that's a tough pill for me to swallow, especially around the holidays that we're not paying them. Uh, there is a, a procedure in place to pay them after a year, but I'd like to suggest moving that down to after 90 days. So my suggested motion as presented. <coughs> I'll support it. I'd like to um, go ahead, Kate. Discuss. I just want to give everyone some background um, on the part-time eligible employees. When I took office um, in 2008, there was no provision for any type of benefits for par our part-time employees, none whatsoever. So we came up with this program um, for and and gave certain part-time employees el eligible status based on how many hours they worked a week. Um, and so th it's just something that we thought was fair at the time. I mean, it can certainly be amended if the board determines that that's what they would like to do. Um, I'm not criticizing the old policy. I'm just saying that these two positions, there's a posi position in my office and there's also one in the clerk's office where it's a it's a known position. It's not like we're hiring somebody part-time to complete a task over three or six months and then they're gone. We know that this is a forever part-time position. And that I, I view that as the difference. I've asked somebody to come in, leave, you know, maybe leave a prior job. Uh, it's, it's very helpful to us that they are willing to work just part-time because I don't need them for the full day. We also don't end up having to pay health insurance and all that. And so that's, I, I'm not criticizing the old way. I'm just trying to make it better for these I, employees. I'm just trying to give some background. Okay. No. But, um, okay, so now that I did that, um, this will also affect the sick leave days yes. and the personal leave days. Yes. And um, I also wanted to point out that we have a couple um, part-time employees that do not work the 25 hours a week that um, and in fact in the supervisor's office we have one that works 20 hours a week and she's been here probably close to 10 years and does not get any type of benefits whatsoever because she doesn't fall into the correct category I'll leave so that up to her yeah immediate and to, to my knowledge she doesn't want them well yeah <laughs> it, it hasn't been an issue for her in the past but right. but I don't know if um, I mean, we get also part-time people in the rec office, and I don't know, and, and typically they don't work over 25 hours a week either. And so I don't know if the township board also wants to look at doing anything for employees that work less hours. That would be fine. So I don't want to convolute my motion with that. Can I just add something? So being an employee who when I started with the township, I went through all those levels. Mm -hmm. Those from the part-time to the part-time eligible, it was a joke. I mean, I would like to see those come out of our policy just because when I went through it, I mean, it wasn't the greatest. Baby steps, Rosalyn. We've already got some we'll of the higher stuff you know, can fixed. I, <laughs> can I ask a question? By doing this, how does it mess up? You said the sick pay and some they other pay. They get six they would end up uh, at over time I believe it's six days Lisa and then they would have three six. three personal days I don't think she can talk up there we get three person uh, full-time gets three personal days one and a half personal days oh yeah it's less oh it it's was half. it's less yes yeah, it's, 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 it's whatever the it's actually hours three times six hours I think is what it came down to maybe I don't understand hours. by just changing it to 90 days instead of a year how that affects what this 
because <laughs> otherwise Jesus. they have to wait a full year before they get any of these days that were closed. They just don't get paid for them right now. Right. But what does that have to do with sick days? That was what I'm confused about. How does your holiday days getting paid for have anything to do with Because if you go back to the manual, the, the, over time they had made part-time eligible people also able to get minimal sick days and I think it's I think it's well yeah it's in here isn't it yeah, yeah it's in right here. but it's six hours so they'll just get they'll get more is what you're saying it's not just that they're gonna get the holiday pay they're it is get more the, they, will, they okay. will get it sooner yeah they will get it sooner and so yes. they're getting the same thing it's just they're gonna get it sooner and how their holiday pay is calculated is the same way I mean if they, they only work get six hours they don't get the full eight right they don't they get what they would work that that's day right or whatever that's okay right. Right. So basically, without this, they lose would lose seven days of pay in the next month and a half. I'm fine with moving it up. I don't see and why they it's would a also year. A year is a long time to wait for benefits. Time. It's like you're not appreciate. I mean, so a the, year is a the long personal, time to wait. They get 12 hours of personal, uh, 12 hours of personal time per calendar year. Right. So instead of waiting a whole year to get it, they would get it after 90 days. days. I think that's yeah, fair. I think a year is a long time to wait to get stuff. Well, especially with how everyone's hiring and yeah. the incentives that they give, I think. So if we put this it, into place, is there any part-time employees that we need to, like? It's my understanding that it only affects two people. Right. So right now. And if they're past 90 days now, they'll go into effect now. They're not going right. to wait for a year just because they were hired no, before we put no, this into effect. No, it's going to be okay. retroactive for those. Well, I, okay. It'd be effective as of <clears throat> tomorrow, anybody that's been here 90 days. Right. right. My concern with this was regarding vacation time because our full-time employees have to wait a year and I read the vacation policy and it's it they would still have to wait a year. Yes, they would, would for have to wait a year, days. so that's, right. that's not a, yeah, I not read a that too, concern. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion by Scott supported by Roz. Uh, I'll do a roll call on this because we're going to change the policy if we pass it. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. Gapama? Yes. Rumble? Yes. All right. Scott? My final one. This is, it's, we're going to have to take a roll call vote on it, but it is housekeeping because this is done every year. Uh, we get the numbers from the Water Resources Commission of Oakland County. Uh, <coughs> if you flip the resolution to the other side, you can see at large this year, these numbers are roughly half of what they were last year. And I guess possibly we should have one of their people come in and explain it to us. I don't know why that, why or how they change the costs every year. Maybe they've just decided that they're not going to give as much attention to our drains over the next year. And so I they cut the, the amounts down. But Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, I know they came in a couple years ago because they were explaining why they were adding so many Correct. more homes well, because and of Paint Creek and such. And why the cost was going up because they were doing extra work, work to get stuff done. Yeah. So I think that's why it dropped again. And I, but yeah, I, show me evidence of where they were or what they did because I, right. you know, it's nice. To think, but anyways, that's that's an, another meeting. The at large is what we pay every year that doesn't get assigned to the homeowners. The thirty-seven thousand is what gets assigned across the homeowners, and believe it or not, in Brandon Township, it's roughly half the parcels. Groveland has none. We have half of our parcels. You know, a lot of them are fifty cents, ninety cents, a dollar fifty, four bucks. It's not a lot of money per house, but it's it's just amazing to me how many <coughs> houses touch some drain uh, along their property. Mm -hmm. So I'm just asking to uh, adopt the resolution just to approve the. Uh, the Oakland County Assessor to spread those funds amongst, amongst the, how, the homes or amongst the parcels and also to approve me paying that $9,595.56 for the at-large portion of the drains. I'll second that motion. All right. And we will take a roll call because it's a resolution in spending money. Uh, Lisa? Yep. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. Kapama? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Chief, your turn. Make it quick, will you, Chief? <laughs> <laughs> and it's still only 3 o'clock. It's still, it's still only 3. We haven't even started yet. Time stands still in Brown. Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this, this is going to go. We have a lot of business to do here, so th th we've got a lot of stuff. It's really important. Yeah. And all of these have already been approved by the fire authority. That is correct. And the rec village. recommended by some the of fire them authority. by the village, some of them not by the village yet. Yep. Um, so we'll start off with the first one, and that is uh, we had to fill uh, Lieutenant Medic uh, Don Ball. He retired, um, so we need to fill up from the bottom. Um, so our first thing is to hire Jake Harless. There was only two applicants that applied by the deadline. Uh, Jake was one. The other was a internal candidate that um, withdrew his name afterwards because he's not in a position to take the job yet. Um, so with that being said, uh, we'd like to hire Jake Harless. Uh, Jake has gone through the paramedic class. Uh, he has to pass his test. Uh, we would like to include on there that he has uh, three months from date of hire to uh, obtain said license and if he doesn't then um, we start the process over again do you want to do these in order as Dave's presenting them yeah yeah so I actually talked to the chief about this for two hours so I'll make the motion for to hire Jake Harless okay. starting November 29 2021 Second. we just keep going with the domino because we went through this whole thing yeah <laughs> Okay, second. So, use the second one too if you want. And then the second motion to promote, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Olert. Mo. 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 Just go with Mo. Mo. <laughs> Just go with okay. Mo. Older. <laughs> to uh, <laughs> Lieutenant, effective November 15th, 2021. I'll support it. Okay, who we was? didn't harmonize that time around. No. no I, think, I, think I think Dana was before me. <laughs> who supported the first one? I'm sorry, I didn't write it down. Um, Scott Rotten. Rotten. Okay. Thanks. All right, uh, we'll do a roll call on motion one, please. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, roll call on the second motion, please. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Motion carries. Next. Excellent. Next one is. Uh, Engineer Medic Tommy Gordon tendered his uh, resignation effective October 29th. We had two applicants that after the deadline uh, submitted applications and we are recommending that we hire um, Julie Sherrod with a start date of November 29th to fill that position. She is already a licensed medic and I'm firefighter. A, I'm a, <laughs> I'll support you. All right. I was say I'll support you. <laughs> Dina makes the motion, Rouse a little second. Any mm -hmm. issues on that? Chief, I, I, I had, was asked this question at the, at the uh, fire meeting, and I, it slipped my mind. We were having too good of a time. <laughs> why, why were they submitted late? Was it poor communication, didn't get out to them, or what? Uh, they had hesitancy. Both of them had hesit hesitancy of submitting an application. So we had, we had some discussion about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. Uh, we have the motion. Can we get a roll call on that, please? Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Herman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Next one is a uh, joint effort between the township and the fire department um, in creating a fire marshal building inspector position. Um, you have all the detail there. Basically, what this will do is it will give us a uh, full-time person Monday through Friday that is capable of doing both building inspections and doing fire inspections instead of just two days a week and when they're on a shift they would work a <coughs> Monday through Friday shift um, 8 to 4 um, just like the fire department does currently yeah, and then uh, just to so everybody knows chief and I had some preliminary discussions with the village when they work on their budget in June there is a good chance that they will become part of this and will reduce the cost to the township and the fire department on this okay. position correct and this kind of goes along with everything that we talked about at our workshop of yep and yeah and there's all there's, those positions and yeah and there's actually two parts to that yep um, and the the other part is I had posted for that and the only uh, individual that met the qualifications was Jason Wolf okay. Kathy thank you um, I my question is how many fire inspections do we usually get in a typical week 
in a typical week well right now we're trying to there's only two of us that are doing the fire inspections and every time we try to do them on shift or I try to do them inevitably something else comes up so then they end up getting canceled um, so then we have to reschedule what my plan is is that we have over 350 buildings if he does one a day that doesn't include weekends holidays off he's still not going to get all of them done uh, and okay. and fire inspections take a little bit longer than a typical building inspection okay so the these are on buildings that are already in the township correct and they have to be done annually they are supposed to be done annually okay yeah. I, was, I wasn't sure if that's what it was or it was an inspection after a fire no but, no that would be an investigation okay right. yeah all right but Thank he's you. also doing that just he's doing the building he's doing both he's doing building inspection and the fire and the marsh. fire inspector right Correct. so it's not just one inspection it's, doing nope. it's going to be wherever <clears throat> he's needed whatever is the priority for the day right and it's not just that he's only going to do building inspections on Tuesdays and Thursdays and fire inspection fire inspections on Monday and Wednesday right right we're going to make it so that he can do it either whatever needs to be done for that day whatever the highest priority is that's what he'll do that day um, that's a real benefit to our residents as well as our contractors um, as well as trying to entice people to come into the Brandon Township makes it much easier for the builders correct right and and then he would be available to go on a, out on a call as well. correct if there was something major um, he would be able to respond to that car accidents um, structure fires you know if it's a second or third medical which you know kind of happens here lately mm -hmm. if we get one we get three it seems like so um, that's what that would do yeah it would give him an extra person and plus that, that would also allow him to cover shifts if we're short personnel he would be one of the la last to be asked um, to cover shifts um, should we have people out on sick leave um, we, we've had that occur a few times um, people injured um, that type of thing COVID so there's all those fun things and then this allows us to split off our ordinance officer too correct by that would right doing, by the township doing this yep yep okay. I'll make both motions I'll support them all right any other further discussion all right can we get a roll call on motion one please Bratton. yes De Palma? yes Marshall yes Thurman yes Unruh. yes Blair yes Rumble. yes motion carries uh, roll call on motion two please De Palma. yes Marshall yes Thurman yes Unruh. yes Blair yes Broughton yes Rumble. yes motion carries next excellent one. next one since uh, Jason Walton is a lieutenant medic uh, now we have to fill his spot on the 24-hour shifts um, and as I said we had two other applicants right so we've already used one this is our second one that is David Mojica mm -hmm. um, what we would do is put him on shift starting after January 1st <clears throat> and uh, we would also promote the next person in line which is engineer medic Eddie Neeson to lieutenant medic I'll make both those motions I'll support thank you Scott and Roz any discussion on those motions nope okay roll call on motion one please Palma. yes Marshall yes Thurman yes Unruh yes Blair yes Broughton yes Rumble yes motion carries uh, motion to roll call, please. De Palma. Yes. Marshall. Yes. Thurman. Yes. Unruh. Yes. Blair. Yes. Broughton. Yes. Rumble. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. On to the next one. Uh, this was what we had talked about in our joint meeting uh, with the village, and that was to hire firefighter EMTs, send them off to paramedic school, and make them engineer medics. Um, with that there would be a three-year contract um, that they'd have to complete uh, said licensing for the paramedic because they're already all fire one and two and need all the fire stuff that was required um, if they do not um, we would part ways and when we part ways they would be responsible for paying those funds back uh, in that training part of it right um, 
with that, I have posted, tested, and I have attached the, the other packet that you have on your desk. Shows who those uh, four individuals were that applied for the three positions and what their scores were. Uh, the person that came out on number one um, was Bob MacArthur. I mean, Tim MacArthur. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back, huh, Bob? <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> 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 uh, number two is Jeff Green. Number three is Ryan Setzer. And number four is Brandon Shudlick. Um, so you have that all in front of you. Uh, the class will start uh, January 4th. Um, we, uh, we are going to be using uh, Davenport University uh, along with Patriot EMS out of Flint, and they will be using the McLaren Health Systems. Um, with that, I'll answer any questions that you may have. Um, so pretty much on this motion, it's as written except um, uh, number four, Shedlick, will, would not be included. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so it would be to hire Tim, uh, Jeff, and Ryan. Okay. And all three of them have indicated that they are interested in the position. Have we, because I know we talked about this at our joint meeting, mm -hmm. do you have everything, like a contract and all that already written from yep, the attorney's office? Yeah, the contract office? is on there, there as well. Yeah. It's right behind there. Okay. And Stuart wrote the contract and the prom promissory note. Okay, that's yep. why I was trying to make sure yep. that this was like all done. Yep. And they've been able to see this. They have seen and it. They're all and they've okay asked questions it. and okay. where we plan on, what we plan on doing, and how we plan on okay. um, carrying out said contract. Okay, yeah, this wasn't given us to us tonight, so I haven't had a chance yep. to look at it all. But I just want to make sure that that was in place before we actually did this and that Correct. they've all looked at it. They since have. We haven't looked at it yet. Um, but Stewart the fire authority did the fire authority did. yes they okay. did okay yep and Stewart wrote this and is good with it and yep. I haven't got that stuff. bill yet either and it <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a necessary bill though not unnecessary um so now what would they be doing besides going to school would they still be helping us when oh absolutely they can? they're gonna be on shifts okay so they'll each one of them will be on a 24-hour <laughs> shift um, they will still be able to do everything else that they normally do because they're firefighter EMTs currently. Okay. So they can drive to the hospital. Um, they just can't be in the back by themselves okay. um, on an uh, ALS-type patient. Um, along with that, the school is only twice a week um, during okay. the day. So depending on those days, they'd go to school on the days that uh, and come back to the station and work their 24-hour shift if they're off that day then they'd go to the school and when they're done with school then they have the rest of the day to do whatever besides they like school are they going to have other training besides just working for us that they have to do at yeah they got to do clinicals um how many hours is it total is it 128 it says and then 136 in semester but three but with the clinicals they'll still it's a have, lot but the, with the clinicals there. they'll still be working for us too during that time too correct right? yep okay. but when they when they're at clinicals they'll be at clinicals right and then they'll be back to help us the the rest of the the shift if you will gotcha okay all right does anybody want to make the motion before I'll make I do? <laughs> I thought there already was. Yeah. I guess Roz? I have one I'll more support, yeah. Okay. I'll motion. make the motion to hire the top three candidates from the testing and interview process in accordance with the contract and promissory note. Support. I guess I have one more question. With them taking this position, then do we need to hire three more people? Or no, because they're no. still doing. They're paid call. They're paid call. Gotcha. There we so, go. So. They're going to be going from a paid call position to a full-time position. Okay. So we're still looking for paid call. Right. So if we're you know of anybody, <laughs> we're always looking for paid call. Ross is it. We'll take you both. <laughs> <laughs> Two for one. <laughs> the bobs are coming back. <laughs> <laughs> the bobs are back in town. Isn't that a song? <laughs> All right. We will do a roll call on that motion, please. Marshall. Yes. Thurman? Yes. Unruh? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. De Palma? Yes. Rumble? Yes. 
This is it, Dave. This is your finale. I got two more, two more. Buddy. Two two more. more. Two, oh, there is two more. Yep, got two sorry. more. Two more. Oh. All right, I'm this is going way too quick. I should stall. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> that's, what, Proceed. that's what Glover told me to do. He said, you know, make it long as I could. <clears throat> right, Lieutenant? He just wanted okay. to make sure you took longer than him. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I had seven <laughs> items. <clears throat> okay, so moving on. Um, the cost of the paramedic program will cost approximately 6000 per student. Um, we need to transfer. I'm recommending that we take 18000 from our carry forward um, amount and put it to our training account. And um, those account numbers are in there. I'll make that motion. I'll support it. Kathy? Question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when are we due to get another ambulance? Uh, we're, we're not due for a while. Okay, because yeah. I noticed that the carry forward was pretty hefty, um, yep. so it shouldn't be an issue. But No, I, it I shouldn't be an issue when. at this point. We have four that are less than five years old, and we have one that, you know, the fifth one, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to replace it at this point. We'll see. Uh, it's helped out really well. So, But we need trucks sooner than later, though. Yes, we need bigger trucks. Mm -hmm. And, and that one, the problem with that is, out of the ambulance one. yeah, for, for now, we're good with the ambulance stuff with the, uh, the big fire trucks. Um, they're looking at almost 720 days now for manufacture. Mm. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Wow. yeah, it's crazy. Thanks to COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks to a lot of things. Absolutely. All right. We will take a roll call on that motion, please. Thurman. Yes. Unroom. Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. Diploma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Last item. Um, the surf truck. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, we replaced Alpha 3, and we got a new Alpha 3, and we were going to get rid of the old Alpha 3. Um, Ted Davis come to me and said, listen, I know it's not the best for what you guys want it for, but it'll work for us because the one we're driving right now is a 1990 vintage. And I said, yes, you could put it in um, antique shows and you might win some prizes, um, an award or you know, a little plaque or something like that. So um, I had them look the vehicle over really good, make sure uh, we've drove it. Um, we, will, we obviously maintain the vehicle as best we can. Um, this, will, this is a stopgap for them. Um, it may get them for years, maybe, but I would say anywhere from that three to seven years. So what I want to do is I want to sell the 1990. Um, that one's a diesel. The other's a gas. Uh, more problems with the diesels. Which we're basically selling just for the engine. That, well, yeah, if, if, even if we can get it, you know, whatever we can. Uh, I'm going to put it on the, um, oh, there's a site uh, that you can put, uh, uh, county uh, municipal owned vehicles um, and they have an auction site for that so and we did really well with the um, the Ford f-350 that we had the shift captain's vehicle uh, we got a lot a lot more money on that than what I anticipated so it was it was good so we'll do the same thing I would like to make the motion I'll support her to authorize the fire chief to dispose of by selling via online auction the 1990 Ford cert truck in place of the old Alpha 3. All right. Any other questions? All right. Can we get a roll call, please? Henry? Yes. Blair? Yes. Broughton? Yes. Diploma? Yes. Marshall? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Rumble? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Welcome, Mike and Tim. Uh, that brings us to citizens' comments on anything. Does any citizens have a comment? Yeah, a couple things real quick. Okay. Um, your next board meeting is on a Monday, the December 6th. 6th. So the parade is on the 4th at 1 o'clock. That's a new time change. It was in my report, but I just want to put it on camera. We'll and then we, uh, Parks and Rec is having a movie night on the 3rd. Okay. And I'd like to invite everybody on the 3rd. We're also going to be, I'd like to see people get involved with decorating the township float. It is the township parade. Um, I've decorated the float for the last 10 years by myself. So Stacy uh, sent an email out today just so you yeah. know. So yeah. it'd be, I might try to get a location that's indoors, either DPW or Hamilton's. 
And also, uh, like to mention about the two officers in the room, they do do a lot of volunteer for the township, but they also do a lot of volunteering for the parks and recreation. Both gentlemen have coached, both gentlemen, if there's money involved, did not want it, they give it back to the parks and rec. So my kids have been going to school here. They started in sixth grade, and I always felt this uh, township was a safe place for them. Agreed. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then, Scott, you brought up something about uh, the part-time eligible. I have two employees that maybe in your future discussion, maybe you'll give them uh, pay for their for the holiday as well. They work, uh, only time they don't work is January, February, and December. They are 25 to 30 hours a week at the park. So they work actually work more than part-time eligible. They're considered seasonal, mm -hmm. but you might be generous and maybe give them paid holidays as well during their time of work. Just to consider, I'm not saying do it, just consider. Thank you. Fred, where's the movie night at on December 3rd? Oh, it's gonna be at the town hall. You know what, Fred, oh, you should probably do that whole evening, because there's a dinner first, right? Or they, they have some kind of, there's yeah, some the kind of Methodist. official dinner at the church. Yep. And then they're doing the movie, but it's also going to be the, doing the tree lighting that night as well. Yes. It's mm -hmm. all part of a grand plan. Yeah. Right. And the parade's not one o'clock at 1 o'clock. The next day. Yep. On the 4th. Okay. Thanks, Fred. I just want Bob. you to know that he has finally gotten rid of the last thing that had my name on it at that part. <laughs> <laughs> the dessert truck? <laughs> Don't ask what the title is. <laughs> just kidding. All right, anybody else? I'd like to comment on the Galt Road. Um, you guys passed something that I don't think you really gave me a fair shot at. Um, when someone purchased something in this township, you, you got to go by what the township sets up. And I'm looking to sell my 20 acres uh, on the Galt Road or acquire 10 additional acres. Um, and this is going to cost me a lot of money to go through and figure out what I'm going to do with this sad. Um, I don't feel that since it was in my purchase agreement that I didn't have to maintain the road until after I lived on it, which I think is reasonable. Um, I think that I was told at the last meeting that this is not a tax, that you made a decision just now based on when the taxes are going to be mailed out. So it is a tax. Um, I just can't believe that someone can pay to put a road in and other people can use a road without paying for the road to go in and then not bringing it up to a county spec to make it a county road and then on top of that I pay county taxes on my property it's vacant I don't get anything what are you gonna set up my fire when the field catches on fire Okay, I don't have a house there. You know, plow my driveway, my road to get to it. You know, I pay a lot of taxes. This is a, a an additional tax, and with you allowing businesses to operate on a private road, that plow the road, that maintain trucks on the road, it's just not right. Um, it's just wrong can't express how disappointed I am I put a lot of time into writing that letter to you guys and um, I've been a citizen here since 1991 bought that property in 89 to build my dream house on and I think that the township owes it to people to set up what a private road is before they buy the property you're collecting taxes on it. It's wrong. It's wrong what you guys did. Just to get it on a tax bill this year, you know, we're talking $300,000 worth of property. You know, $250 an hour for a lawyer? Give me a break. 
I got to pay $250 a lawyer too to fight this now. The township's going to have to pay $250 an hour to also fight it. Of course, their attorney's going to recommend your three minutes is that up, they don't. Sir. And the other stuff that was talked your about in this meeting, is expired, sir. Beside this, sir, your all three these salaries and everything, and your attitude. You guys are jokes. You're, thank jokes. you. You're expired. Thank you. Any other residents have anything to say? All right. With that, uh, board comments. We'll start down there again. Dana, you got anything else to add? Um, just hope everyone has a happy Thanksgiving. And can we fix that clock? Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to fix it. Scott volunteered to do that tomorrow. I'm going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Thank uh, you. <laughs> sorry. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. And also, uh, I'd like to thank the veterans. Uh, veterans Day is, oh, is, yes. this day, is this week. So yeah. thank veterans for uh, for all they've done. I second that. Add that on. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Uh, Rosalind? Um, I just want to say thank you to our Oakland County Sheriff's Department and our Fire Department. Our community would not be what it is without you and all your hard work in your team. So thank you very much. Thank um, you guys. And again, I just cannot thank everyone who worked for this ele last election, for the special election on November 2nd. Um, it was amazing, and I just cannot thank the people that were part of that enough. So thank you. I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving and a Veterans Day. All right. Uh, I'll just say I do plan on going to the, uh, I think it's a wreath lane actually at. Uh, the new cemetery over there in Holly on the 11th to participate in that. They asked me to participate in that, so I will be going. Uh, thank you guys all, and Mike and Tim, welcome. Appreciate it. And that's it. Um, Scott? Yeah, this is going to be a little bit different. I, I hope it's appropriate. We, we lost another longtime community member, Dean Sally, over the weekend. Aww. And he was he was integral to, to a lot of things here in this township and, and in the village. But you know he was really active. How I got to meet him was with the historical society. But I don't think people realize even in this building, he was part of the woodworkers group and they donated time. You know, working. I don't. He might have even been part of building this dais here or, or dais. Of he, he, good old guy. I really enjoyed getting to meet him, and I'm glad I did. And I just wanted to mention his name. Uh, it's up to you, <laughs> Steve. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for everybody coming out. And uh, that's it. All right, thank you, Kathy. All right. Um, <clears throat> yes, I'm also going to miss Dean. He, he was, he was a <clears throat> very dedicated resident um, in our township, and he will be missed. Um, I'd also like to thank the veterans and our police and our fire of course they also they do such an amazing job for our township so we appreciate that um happy thanksgiving thank you uh can we get a motion to adjourn so moved can I get a second support all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. motion carries